The Scorpion unit was put together to add extra visibility in the community and also develop relationships with community members. The acronym stands for Street Crimes Operations to Restore Peace in Our Neighborhoods. And it basically was that people felt like the police department was allowing gun violence in certain communities. And it wasn't that, it was just that police officers that are responding to calls for service had such high volumes of calls. The whole idea that the Scorpion unit is a bad unit, uh, I just have a, a problem with that. This video is brought to you by The Officer Tatum Store. The Officer Tatum Store, get the merch link in the description section. Ladies and gentlemen, we have 50% off items right here on the clearance rack. Man, all your favorite stuff, we doing 50% off. I'm almost ashamed, but we got brand new stuff that we're trying to bring out that's actually off the chain. And so get that stuff out of here so we can get some new products in. My book is available right now for $25 for the signed copy. And we have all of the Tatum new premium merch. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the best quality jacket you're going to get and flannel. And we got some of the new products called Love. We got our Love line coming out, our noggin hats. I mean, all these things that we have are available for you are high quality. We ship them within 24 hours or 48 hours, depending on if it's a weekend. And you're going to get the best product in the conservative movement. So, so go on. Link is in the description section. Use discount code God first. Get 20% off the entire store. Like and subscribe to the channel. Hit the bell so you get notifications anytime I go live. Make a video. Make sure you subscribe to this channel. Like this video. Comment on this video. Share this video. Let's get into this. I just want to address this real quick. You know, I, I can I can smell a rat a mile away. I can smell a rat a mile away. I can smell a, a devious person a mile away. And I knew that there was some suspicious and shady about the Memphis police chief. I knew it. When you see a person going out and going on the news and, 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 and speaking ill will against the police officers that are and taking really no accountability. I mean, the first thing you say, even if you believe it or not, as a leader, you have to say, it is my fault that those officers did that. I'll take full responsibility. We need to work on our training. I did not have them equipped. And I did not make sure we didn't have people like this on the streets. Like I, I would I would cry if I heard a police chief in 2023 say something like that. I would literally cry because people don't have spines anymore in the police profession and in woke America. They just don't have it. It's OK to say, look, it's my fault. I remember I remember when I, before I uh, left the police department, I really wanted to be a chief one day. It was my goal, my passion, my dream to become the police chief one day. And I was really on that track. I had went back to school to get my master's degree because you need a master's degree to be able to promote past captain. I was a public information officer with like two and a half years on the police department. And normally all of the chiefs end up being PIOs at some point in their career. So, you know, for people that know about policing, there's a fast track, right? They fast track certain people that they think could be leaders and they get you involved in these different uh, specialty units like public information officer, um, the uh, internal affairs unit, units that some people would, would gawk at, they are pushing you in that area because that leads you to a leadership position. So they were really pushing me in that direction. And I would I, I believe I would have been a great leader. One of the things that I often said is that I'm going to always take accountability for my actions. It's just like a football team. You know, when your team does something wrong as a football coach, you don't say, I mean, you rarely hear football coaches say, yeah, my quarterback sucks. You know, when the Raiders get smashed every other week, every other week they play, I'm, I'm saying it because my, my boy Nick is a Raiders fan. Um, they don't say car, the, the coach don't come out and say car is trash. He throwing picks after picks after picks. He can't win a game. The coach don't say nothing like that. The coach come out and say, look, we, we got to do better. You know, uh, I got to call better plays. Um, it, it is my responsibility to get my men prepared and they weren't prepared today and, and we lost the game. And, and that's that's pretty much how it goes. I, I got to do better. And then they get off the press conference and they walk off and then in the back of their mind, they're like, oh man, I ain't got nothing but trash players. But but that's the same thing about being a police chief. You know, when you come out there before the people and your men, your men ended up killing somebody in a specialty unit and, and it's so unprofessional in the way in which they handle business, 
as a leader, you have to come out and take full responsibility and say, it is my fault that these men acted this way. I'm the chief. I, I'm responsible for the training. I make sure that we have quality people working for this city. I failed you. And, and, and if you don't want to step down, you can say, and I will make it right. I ensured the public that we will hire officers with better character and, and go down the list. But you can't go on a, on a tour on CNN, MSDNC, and all these left-wing media outlets just proclaiming that your officers are so, this is the worst I've ever seen him. I've been policing for decades and, and I've never seen anything like this. It's like, you, do you understand that you're, you're articulating that this is under your leadership? Now, with that being said, come to find out she was fired and I got little birdies, right? I got my birdies. Call me up on the phone. Say, look, I got this. I got this, 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 and that. What you want to do with it? And I say, all right, it's public record, so I can go with it. But the chief of Memphis PD was fired from Atlanta PD because she was over a unit that was investigating a crime that was committed by apparently her friend's husband. And this dude was, was having sex with, I don't know, 50 something kids, minors. I believe it was minors. He ended up going to prison for it, but because she was trying to cover it up. And if it wasn't for the FBI investigation, or the, fed, or the federal government investigation, they would have never found out that this guy had did that because she was covering it up. And when the FBI got involved and they realized, oh, this guy got to go to jail, they fired her. And, you know, there's a such thing called affirmative action hires. And so they needed a black face to lead the Memphis Police Department. And what do they do? They hire a degenerate, allegedly. They hired the, a, a, a degenerate she goes over to the police department and then there was another deputy chief that was at Atlanta PD. His son was a police officer with Atlanta PD. His son decided to get drunk and ended up getting into a crash and killing somebody. Now that deputy chief resigned from Memphis PD and worked for CJ, the chief of Memphis. So she got this guy over there. Two, two people that, that weren't good enough to be, in my opinion, moral-wise, they weren't good enough to be in Atlanta PD. They take them over to Memphis and say, have your way. And then the Scorpion Unit situation. The same deputy chief that implemented the Scorpion Unit in Atlanta for Atlanta PD decided to take it over to Memphis. I mean, listen, from the top down, there's problems on Memphis PD. And if you look at some new articles that have come out, they're, they're firing more and more people associated with this situation. It says more police officers relieved of duty over the death of Tyree Nichols, EMS, fired. It says two more Memphis police depart police officers have been relieved for their duty following the death of that, that gentleman I just spoke of. Um, on His death occurred on January the 10th, three days after Memphis police put. Memphis PD pulled him over on a traffic stop. I wish they would say a traffic stop where he was supposedly recklessly driving. But of course, they're not going to put that in there because they need this to be sensational as possible. And it says police said that during the stop, a confrontation occurred. And I'll go down here. Surveillance footage that was found at the, at the stoplight showed that they were whooping him. I'm paraphrasing, but that's exactly what happened. And it says Associated Press uh, reported that the Memphis Fire Department officially announced on Monday that they have fired three EMS medical uh, technicians responded to the scene you know you know why i have a problem with with them firing these people and it's not necessarily because do they need to be fired it's because you guys are firing them because of backlash because this man died on january the 10th if you really thought they did something inappropriate you'd have fired them when they did it you would have fired them after this man died but you know Cowardice leadership says that, oh, we getting we're getting backlash. Let's cover our own rear ends. So now we're going to fire people to cover ourselves. To make to make us look better than what we're what we're doing here. And and I feel like that's enough of the Memphis PD situation that I will say. Um, but I'm not done with you black folks. 
All right. I'm, I may be done with the Memphis PD, PD, but I'm not done with the black folks. I want to play a clip from Sleazy D.L. Hughley. And I call him Sleazy because he is Sleazy. Don't get mad at me and say a Christian ain't supposed to say that because Jesus called the Pharisees hypocrites and vipers and all kind of stuff. Said they going to hell and everything. So I can call D.L. Hughley Sleazy and still be a Christian. Let's go with clip two from D.L. Hughley on this Memphis situation. We don't have it. Okay. We don't. We'll, we'll, we'll get it for you. Just just wait. Y'all hold on. Y'all y'all probably need to take a break and sit down for a minute before I bring this out because it's crazy. We've seen in the news that all kinds of deranged people are coming out and, you know, I, I feel bad. Like, I'm glad that, that I'm saved and that I'm around good, positive people because it must suck being a black man living in America under the ideas of these deranged Democrats and people like D.L. Hughley. It, it is so oppressive believing in black people in America as a black man. These black people, not all. It is, it is oppressive. And if anybody keep, keep telling me about the white man is the problem, it, you know, you, you just, I don't know what planet you live on. Black liberals and these feckless black leaders and activists are the biggest threat to black people in America by far. They're big. They're a bigger threat than slavery, than Jim Crow, than modern day black folks that are in leadership positions are the biggest threat to black America. Hold the phone. I'll explain it after the break. 